the distinguished newscaster, Mr. George Putnam. Hi, guy. Hey, get your own act. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Thank you very much. You know, like Bill Welsh, I missed the opening day, too. I didn't arrive at KTTV until 1951. And what attracted me to the station was its policy of making news and special events of paramount importance. Television's coverage of the tragic Kathy Fiscus affair, where the little girl was trapped in an old well shaft and destined to die before help could reach her, convinced many radio newscasters, myself included, that this new electronic medium was the wave of the future. Channel 11's emphasis on news was there from the very first day on. At first, it was simply a man at a desk with some photographs pasted on an old art card. In 1951, the KTTV newsreel became an integral part of our nightly program schedule. Newscaster George Martin, Jr. was the repertorial voice on those early broadcasts. From the scene to your screen, through facilities of the Los Angeles Times, the Times KTTV newsreel brings you tonight's top stories. Artillery halts red drive on Seoul. Price control head quits in dispute. And a television first in a taxi cab. Now the full report on these and other events of Tuesday, May 1st. The trials of preparing and delivering a nightly television newscast are numerous. Certainly I know from experience. George Martin had an additional challenge each night before he could wrap the news. We weren't set up to microwave uh, uh, the, the show from downtown, so we had to bring the, the film reel, which essentially was the show, out to the Beacons Building at Santa Monica and Highland, where we hung out on the 14th floor during the broadcast in the evenings. And that involved a battle with the pre-freeway traffic and also a battle with time because we worked until the last possible minute and uh, the film editors were working over the hot splashers, getting the reel together, and I was getting last minute script things done. And uh, rapidly we bundled the whole thing into one of the company cars and set out for Santa Monica and Highland from 2nd and Broadway. I remember one time we clocked the trip and I made it in 11 minutes about benefit of freeway, or at least regularly surprised people along 3rd Avenue or 3rd Street and other, other direct routes to the scene. But of course, there was much more to doing that job of broadcasting television news than just the nightly broadcast from our studio. We prided ourselves on being on the actual scene of the news, when and where it was taking place. And the technical state of the art of telecasting was was pretty primitive in those early days compared to the electronic marvels that we all have on hand today. But we worked with what we had as director Jack Scott remembers. I remember that we were on the air, you know, and we were only on for a few hours, et cetera. But we had a real scoop. There was a fire raging in the Hollywood Hills. So we moved our camera out into the hall and put our lens out there, went to our longest lens, you remember that? Mm -hmm. And we shot this and put it on the air. We have a scoop, you know, while it's happening, because they didn't have helicopters, we weren't up in helicopters, I know of no one was doing it yet. But I thought, how marvelous, here we are, showing the fire as it's going on, you know. And it was our first scoop, instantaneous actuality now, you know. But it wasn't long until the forward-looking management here at Channel 11 provided the programming department with remote trucks and the mobile equipment that all went with them. And believe me, we used them. And a word right here about the television engineers who worked side by side with us. They kept the equipment operating no matter what. And if all else failed as a final resort, they knew how to apply that RCA treatment. And of course, I was a brand new director then, and I was going out on a, on a show that, uh, where we did several, several remotes from all over, the, all over the city. And I walked into the into control truck ready to do my bit, and I looked up, and the monitor was bad. And I reported it to one of the engineers, the monitor, something wrong with the monitor. And the engineer looked up at the monitor, and he said, we'll give it the RCA treatment. The RCA treatment? I thought, oh, my God, I'm a new director, and all my cup runneth over. And now I'm going to see how, what a wonderful thing they're going to do and how these technical geniuses. Mm -hmm. So the guy went up to give it the RCA treatment, walked up to the monitor, and went, boom! <laughs> and the monitor worked. 
And from then on, I've had nothing but respect for the genius of KTTV engineers. We were ambitious, and you viewers responded. An early weekly series called Success Story, sponsored in those days by the Richfield Oil Company, called for a live telecast from a different remote location each and every week. And those locations weren't just around the corner, either. We roamed far and wide throughout this community, but we got what we were after. Well, we'll be right back with more, including a rundown of some of the most sensational news stories of the past 35 years, so don't go away. Other top news in just a moment. Well, my friend, when business beckons you to Australia, mix that business with pleasure. The pleasure of going by Pan Am Jet. Uh, First remembrance I have of George is uh, he drove up uh, in a fire engine red Jaguar that had headlights about that big on it, and, <laughs> and uh, he was uh, uh, quite theatrical, and, and um, he was one of those guys I would never want him on my case because I don't think he would ever get off unless you convinced him that, that he was wrong, and uh, he, he did his research very well, I thought. the newsroom some of the stories we're going to be covering in about so 35 minutes at 10 o'clock the fbi investigating a bomb threat against the rose parade the president returns to washington because of the crisis in lebanon jesse jackson hopes to meet with syrian president assad six traffic deaths in los angeles county the first baby born at women's hospital the raiders win the rams lose thousands camping out along the rose parade route we're going to join them in the morning this and all the news and sports right here at 10. See you then. You know, I'm proud to have been part of a television news department that for a period of 20 years was number one among all Los Angeles television stations. And during those years, we had many conspicuous firsts to our credit. One of them was our live coverage from Ann Arbor, Michigan, of the Jonas Salk polio vaccine. And you will be among the first to know. For Richfield cameras and KTTV have brought you on the West Coast 2,100 miles to Ann Arbor to this University of Michigan campus. But please remember that the meeting originally was designed for scientific people, and it was because we felt it would be important to you that KTTV and Richfield uh, prevailed upon the National Foundation, the University of Michigan, and the other members of the uh, faculty, staffs concerned to allow us to pick up this momentous history-making event. And we also covered all the crime stories. One of the most sensational, of course, was the murder of Mabel Monaghan by Barbara Graham. Police arriving find the night light still burning, indicating that she was killed during the evening. Detectives find the body in a halfway linen closet face down on the floor, a loosely knotted cloth around the neck, the hands tied behind with a blood-soaked length of sheet. And I remember that the beautiful actress Susan Hayward, preparing for her Academy Award-winning role in I Want to Live, a movie based on the Barbara Graham case, sat right here in our studio while we were on the air with the news, watching my interviews with the murderess. The L. Ewing Scott case was the first one I recall where there wasn't a corpus delecti. And then, of course, the infamous Manson case, the Helder Skelter story. I'm saying God is on the move, and God is the jailhouse. God has been locked up in rows and rows of cages for a long time. That you put him there. The system has judged itself. Now the brothers are coming out, and they're going to judge you as they have been judged. And we were there at the Ambassador Hotel to witness the senseless act of violence that resulted in the death of Senator Robert Kennedy and the subsequent arrest and the trial that convicted his assassin. Sirhan B. Sirhan. Mobsters associated with Mickey Cohen made headlines in gangland killings, and we had our cameras there. The Hungarian revolt left a badly outnumbered band of freedom fighters crushed under the boot of the Soviet army. Working with Norman Chandler, the publisher of the Los Angeles Times, KTTV Channel 11 News joined in an effort that resulted in thousands of Hungarian refugees being brought out of their homeland and right here into Southern California. I am talking to you, to the people of the free world of, of America. You do not know the horrors of communism. 
You do not know what means starvation, suppression, and I hope you won't know that. And I warn you, I warn you to fight anybody who wants to take your freedom away. And I want to thank all the support and gifts what you have given to my poor country. Yes, and I also remember how management here at Channel 11, in a radical departure from the way things were done in those early days, encouraged us to speak our mind on issues of the day. We called it One Reporter's Opinion, and it set a pattern for others to follow. Well, many of you have asked where I stand in the Los Angeles County District Attorney race. I stand for District Attorney William B. McKesson. His opponent's 14-year record under former District Attorneys was carefully reviewed by the Board of Supervisors back in 1956, and they decided against him, and unanimously in favor of Judge McKesson as the man best qualified for the job of District Attorney. District Attorney McKesson was chosen over 28 candidates. And now, out of the shadows, have come hundreds of thousands of dollars in support of his opponent. The word integrity and McKesson are one and the same. Yes, if it was news, we were there and reported it. We got the story. We prided ourselves on our quick setup. And sometimes when we had a special news story, like uh, we'd try to cover a uh, plane crash, uh, forest fires, floods, anything that happened, we were on Johnny's on the spot. Fires of all kinds found our Channel 11 news crew in the most hazardous conditions imaginable. A real risk to life and limb. More often than not, we found ourselves surrounded by flames. But we knew that you couldn't adequately cover these events sitting at a desk back in the studio. And we had a great investigative reporter in our department, too, Paul Coates. And we're going to pause briefly here, and, and when we come back, you're going to see some scenes from a remarkable documentary on the drug LSD, for which Paul was responsible on his confidential file show. So please stay with us. By the mid-50s, it was conceded by most that Sunday night belonged to the late Paul Coates and his confidential file. Paul recognized his story when he saw it, and the most startling one was the graphically portraying effects of the newly discovered hallucinogenic drug, LSD. In about four minutes, a volunteer subject will ingest 100 gammas of LSD. One gamma is one millionth of a gram. As the drug begins to take effect, you'll see the symptoms similar to schizophrenia develop. You'll see evidence of a split personality, of fear, of apprehension, hypomanic elation, grandiose and ecstatic feelings. This report will be filmed over a period of about four hours in order to show the entire course of the experiment. It will then be edited down to the regular length. It was no accident that we had chosen an artist as the subject for the experiment. Dr. Brussel had suggested it, and he had a reason. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent light. The control drawing, for comparison with others to be made later, was completed at 12.17. One hour after he had taken it, Malark was very definitely feeling the effects of the LSD. It was hard to believe that the second portrait was done by the same man. This is the way he saw me. After he completed this one, he was asked to compare it with his first effort. The eyes, for example, are the same to me, and the line of the nose is the same and the mouth is still a sweet mouth. The research into the effects of LSD, part of which you've seen tonight, could conceivably lead to the answers about schizophrenia, a disease that accounts for some 325,000 beds in American hospitals, one-fourth of all the hospital beds. But one thing is certain. Everything possible must be done to improve America's mental health. It's the nation's number one health problem. Documentaries such as The Famous Angel Death fought vigorously against drugs and the drug pusher. From the beginning, as a public service, we gave our airways to various charitable organizations such as the Arthritis Foundation, Muscular Dystrophy, and United Cerebral Palsy. And a special word to the memory of a very talented man, a friend, a great humanitarian, Mr. Ben Hunter, who during the years that he hosted The Ben Hunter Show, was responsible for the adoption of many 
hard to place little babies. Well, Ted Knight, that's my final story for today, so let me sign off, as you and I always do, with then that's the <laughs> up-to-the-minute news, up-to-the-minute, that's, that's all, all the news. news. See you at 10. Till tomorrow, see, see you, you there. then. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. <Christ. laughs> Thank you very much.